Questions? Go ahead, Deshaun. Right now, what I'm sharing with you are the questions and the answers to the exam. <coughs> Does that address your concern? It will be a comprehensive um, measure of your understanding of these learning modules. So there's no multiple guess? No multiple guess. Okay. Now we'll save that for the final, and you could guess to your heart's delight. <laughs> Trisha K? We don't have any handout. Oh, no? No. They printed it off of uh, the website, the course website which is myspace.com <laughs> forward slash one, two, three, T. Yeah, that one. <laughs> a product has a certain life cycle. And there's several stages to this life cycle. Introduction, growth, maturity, decline, revitalization, and obsolescence. Sure. What we're talking about now is the product life cycle. The product is a bundle of tangible and intangible attributes. Each product has a certain life cycle. The first stage is when the product is introduced. That's introduction. During that stage, what we're attempting to do is to create primary demand. Another term that means the same thing is category need. So we're trying to create a preference for a particular product type. And that's what Apple did um, in part, that's so compelling. Remember, they didn't invent the MP3 player, but what they did successfully was they created a strong category need. They created primary demand for MP3 players. But after the product was introduced, then they shifted their focus during the growth stage to creating selective demand. Selective demand is creating a preference for a particular brand. So this is really best in class in terms of marketing. What Apple did was very impressive. They created a very powerful brand and wrapped that around the product and was successful in generating billions of dollars in sales by creating a brand. Remember, they didn't create the product. What they did was create a brand. Yes, Tanya, something you want to add? No, I have a saying, when you put a sign outside the door, it's going to be very useful. So oh, the sign, did it fall down? Well, yeah. So you turn to me and it just said, Yes, shut up. Right, so what they did was they created selective demand. They created a preference for the iPod brand. They are not they didn't invent MP3 players but they successfully commercialize that product. Impressive, right? They weren't the first to market. 
MP3 players existed before the iPod was introduced, but they took the product and successfully brought it to market under the iPod brand franchise and created brand recognition, brand recall, a favorable brand attitude, a unique brand positioning in the marketplace, and they have a brand hierarchy, so they have a branding strategy. Apple Computer Inc. is the corporate brand, their master brand is iPod, and then they have some sub-brands. Like, what are some of their sub-brands for iPod? Yeah. Nano, Mini. Shuffle, yeah. Mini, Mini. <coughs> Yes, and now? Yes, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going through that. So, introduction, we create primary demand. Growth is we create selective demand and brand insistence. Brand. Insistence or brand preference. And then at some point, we reach maturity, which means that sales stop growing. Sales become flat. And then at some point they decline. And then eventually the product will become obsolete. What would be a good example of a product that's followed that life cycle or pretty close to following that life cycle. Yeah, Michael? Jim. I was going to say that. <laughs> well, that's, that's a brand. Think about a product, like for example, the VCR. Or the cassette player. Floppies. Right, floppy disks. Yeah, excellent, right? Uh, any of you know what a eight track is? <laughs> Right? Products can become obsolete. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always going to precisely follow that bell curve, but that, that's not what it's important. We could be in each stage for a varying period of time. Depending on the product, we might be a year in a certain stage. We might be 10 years in a certain stage. We could be 50 years in a particular stage. But what's important for us, the takeaway is that we understand that it's going to follow that life cycle. So our job, our challenge, is to manage that life cycle. So knowing that it's going to follow that pattern, how do we keep the product growing? How do we continue to increase sales? What are the strategies and tactics that we could deploy so that sales continue to increase each and every year. So we need to continue to modify the marketing mix. The marketing mix is the four P's. The product, the price, the place, and promotion. So when we define the marketing mix, it's not static. It's got to be dynamic, which means that we're going to change it over time. So for example, we could lower the price. That's certainly going to allow us in a price sensitive market, in a market that's elastic, to sell more units. We could add more features. Isn't that what iPod did? Although they never actually lowered the price per se, they kept basically the same price points until recently when they introduced some below the umbrella, if you will, where they broke from that. 399, 299, 199, and came in with something that's 149 and 79. Right? They didn't lower the price, but they added, they changed the product and they added more features and benefits. So they would give you, for example, more gigabytes. Not lower the price, but they realized that time is passing, so instead of 20 gigabytes,